In this video, we're gonna learn how to form the shear and moment equations in our beams. Now first, we'll define what the shear and moment equation is. Now the shear and moment equation is the value of the shear force and bending moment expressed in terms of the variable distance x. Now when establishing shear and moment equations, we have to draw the shear force and bending moment on its positive effect. Now for the sign conventions, we have this one as the positive effect for shear and this one as the positive effect for bending. Now sir, when can we say that it has a positive effect considering shear? If your shear forces are acting on these directions, then notice that if you're holding the beam at this point, these forces will rotate the beam clockwise. And so that's why it will establish a positive effect. So for a positive effect to occur, the shear force at the right side must be acting downward. While for this one, if you are holding the beam at this point and then you are applying these forces, then it will rotate the beam counterclockwise. And so that's why it will have a negative effect. Now for bending, the positive effect is if the applied moments at the ends would cause the beam to bend this way. Now so that you can remember this easily, if the beam bends forming a smile, then it's considered positive bending. While if it forms a sad face, it's considered negative bending. And so for the positive effect, the moment at the right side must be acting counterclockwise. And so we'll be using that in forming the shear and moment equation. And so for our example, we have the following. Uh, establish the shear and moment equations for all segments of the beam. Now for the shear and moment equations, by convention, our origin for x must be from the left. However, if you'll form the shear and moment equation from the left side or the right side, you will just obtain the same value. And then I will just show that later. And so we will copy this one. And then for the first step, we need to find the reactions of the beam. And then we'll label all the points where there are changes in loading. So this is the left end. So we have A. And then this is B because this is where the uniform load stops. And then for the roller support, let's label it point C. So we have reactions right here. We have AY and we also have AX. And then for C, we have CY. Now, since we don't have any horizontal forces, then AX will become zero. Now, in forming the shear equation, if AX has a certain value, it won't matter because AX produces an axial force towards the beam. Now, again, axial and shear forces are different. Imagine that this is our beam, and then if we have an axial force, let's say this is AX, this won't affect the shear value. Because what's gonna cause shear would only be the forces parallel to the cross section. Uh, this is the cross section of the beam, and if we are applying a vertical force, which is this one, this is a distributed load, the direction of the force is parallel to the cross section, while AX is perpendicular, and so that's why it's considered axial. Now, to solve AY, I can take moments about C. So taking moments about C, we have AY multiplied by the moment arm, which is 10 meters, and then this is positive because it will cause a clockwise rotation about C. And then for the uniform load, let's first write the resultant. Now the resultant of the uniform load will just act at the center. So we have this resultant and then the value of this resultant will be the area of the load. So since this is just a rectangle, it will be base multiplied by the height. So we have 20 kN per m, the height multiplied by the base which is 6 meters. And so meters will cancel and then we get 120 kN. And so this distance is 3 meters. So we have AY times 10, so we have minus 120, this resultant, multiplied by 4 plus 3. And then don't forget that we have an applied moment of 30 kNm here at C. And so we'll include this in our summation. Now since this is counterclockwise, the sign will be minus. So we have minus 30, and then this would be equal to 0. And so solving AY, we have 87 kN. So this is 87 kN. And then to solve CY, let's just sum up forces vertical. So we have summation of forces along y. This will be 87 acting upward, so positive, and then minus 120, and then plus cy. And so this is equal to 0. And so solving cy, we have 33 kn. Now for the shear and moment equation, we have to do it by segment. And then our cut for each segment must be just right before the last segment. Now let's say we want the equation for AB. Our cut will be right here, not directly at point B, but just before point B. And then for BC, since the last point is point C, then our cut will be just right before point C. Let's say right here, just before point C. And so this means that for segment BC, if we have this cut, then this load will be excluded because if we are to consider the left side, this won't be included anymore because the cut was right before point C. And so this is an important concept that you have to remember. And so first, we're going to establish the shear equation for segment AB. 
And so this is the segment that we want. And so let's make it a practice to establish the limits of the segment we are considering. Now for segment EB, it starts from 0. So this is lesser than or equal to. And then we have x, which is our variable. And then our last point will be just right before 6 meters. And so this will be lesser than. And then we have 6 meters. Don't include an equal sign right here. Because again, our cut is just right before 6 meters. Now sir, why is it helpful to establish the limits? This limit will help you know what you can substitute for the equation that you will be able to form. So for our Shea equation, for segment AB, we can only substitute 0 up to the point just right before 6 meters. Now that's what you have to remember. And so now, we'll establish our cut. So since our cut is just right before point B, it will be right here. And so this is our cut. And then we'll consider the left side. Because again, our origin is always from the left side of the beam. And so we'll consider this as our x. And then this is only up to the cut. And so we'll extend this one. This is now our x, which is in terms of the horizontal distance of our beam. Now for shear, we are talking about the forces. But we'll only consider the vertical forces. Because again, horizontal forces will be equal. Now let's go back here. For the positive effect, uh, again, we need to draw the shear force and bending moment on its positive effect. Now for the positive effect, the shear at the right side must be downward. So here, in our cut, we have a downward shear force. And then for the moment, for the positive effect, we have counterclockwise on the right side. And so our internal moment right here, in our cut, it will be acting counterclockwise. And so we'll sum up forces up to this point. So summation of forces along y equal to 0, we have 87. Now most students, when forming the shear equation, they will automatically subtract 120. However, this is wrong. Now why? Notice that we want the shear force in terms of the variable x. And so this means that we'll express the resultants of this load as a function of x. And so just so you can better understand this, let's try to draw a uniform load. Let's say this has a magnitude of w, and then our x is starting from the left. Now if you want to find the force at any point, let's say at this cut, and then you'll move x, let's say right here, and then you'll still be able to get the resultant, then you have to express the resultant in terms of x. Now notice that if I will only consider this cut, then my resultant will be right here, at the middle portion of this distributed load, not the whole one, because we are only considering up to this cut. Now if I will move this one right here, our x will only be up to this point, and so the resultant will also move right here, and then it will decrease in magnitude because our x is now lesser. And so to get the resultant in terms of x, then we have, we know that the resultant is the area of the load, and so this is essentially w multiplied by x. This is the resultant. And so this is how we must define our shear equation. Now in our example, since we have W equal to 20 kN per m, and then it's acting downward, then this is essentially minus 20 W multiplied by the distance x, so times x, and then we have a downward shear force. Now let's just label this as AB, uh, VAB, and this one as MAB. And so now that we have this, let's subtract VAB because it's acting downward, so minus VAB, and then this will be equal to 0. Notice that since this is acting downward, we have minus, we can just move that to the other side of the equation. So this now becomes VAB is equal to 87 minus 20x. So this is now our shear equation for this particular segment, AB. And then for the limits, it means that we can only substitute 0 up to the point just before 6 meters. And so you can substitute 1, you can substitute 2, or you can substitute 5.99, but not 6. However, since point B doesn't have a concentrated load, 6 right here will still work. But in the case where there is a concentrated load at the last point of the segment, then you can't apply 6 meters. And so that's why we have to make this our habit. And so now, let's go to the moment equation for segment AB. And so we'll still have the same limits, but then we'll now sum up moments here at the cut. And so let's say at this point, so we have summation of moments at the cut equal to 0. Then this will be 87 multiplied by the moment arm towards the cut, which is x. So 87 multiplied by x. And then we have, since this was our force, we'll just add the moment arm. So minus 20x. And then for the moment arm, let's consider this figure again. Now if this is our resultant force, what is this distance? Recall that for uniform loads, the resultant of this load will just be at the middle if we will consider this one. 
And so this is essentially x divided by 2, half of this distance. And so our moment arm for this load towards the cut, that will be x over 2, half of this one. And so times x over 2, and then we have mab, which is acting counterclockwise. So this is minus mab, and then this is equal to 0. And so let's move this to the other side of the equation. We have mab equal to 87x minus 20 times x squared divided by 2 and then this will just become 10 and so let's cancel this one this is now 10 so minus 10x squared this is now our moment equation for segment ab now what can you notice between the two vab and mab notice that vab is just the derivative of mab because in our concept the summation of all shear forces about a certain point, that will be our moment. And so if we have a function m, and then we'll differentiate this one with respect to x, then dm over dx will be the shear equation. Now if we'll differentiate this one, then we have uh, mab equals 87x minus 10x squared. And so if we have dmab over dx, just treat this as your y. And so this is just like dy over dx. So differentiate this once, you have 87, and then 2 times negative 10, that will be minus 20. And then subtract 1 right here for the exponent, then you have x. And so notice that this is similar to vab. And so this is obtained by this concept. And so that's why if you will integrate VAB, you will also get MAB. But let's just focus more on this concept because when you have applied moments, then integrating the shear equation will not be enough to form the moment equation. And so now, since we are done with segment AB, we will now move to segment BC. And so for segment BC, we will now be moving our cut. So it will now be just right before point C. And then let's just move this one. We have again the positive effect in which the shear force is downward and then the internal moment is counterclockwise. However, we will now change this one into BC, so MBC and VBC. However, since we learned earlier that we can just move these to the other side of the equation, then we'll just define MBC and VBC directly. And so now we'll still be considering the left side of our cut. And then now we'll move X to this specific cut. And so let's extend the cut right here. And so our X will now move. It will now be up to this point. And so let's just move this one. Instead of AB, we now have segment BC. And so we'll change this one and also this one. And then our limits will now change. It will now be from 6 meters up to the point before 10 meters. So this is from 6 up to, let's say, 9.99. Because again, we don't have an equal sign right here. So this is also 10, while this is 6. And so for the shear equation, we will now sum up forces up to this point. So we have for VBC, this will be 87 upward, so positive. And then this is where you have to be careful. Notice that for segment BC, the distributed load has already stopped. And so this means that instead of expressing the distributed load in terms of x, we will now apply its equivalent concentrated load. Because at point B, we now have the full application of this distributed load. Because we are now starting at this point. And so essentially, we will just directly subtract 120. So minus 120. This will now be our shear for segment BC. And so this is negative 33kn. It will just be a constant term. Again, we are not expressing it in terms of x because for this segment, the distributed load has already stopped and so it won't be described in terms of x. Instead, it will be described in terms of the resultant. Now, how about for the moment equation for segment BC? Now, we have here MBC. So this will now be equal to taking moments about the cut. We have 87 multiplied by the moment arm, which is x. And then it will be positive because about this point, this will cause a clockwise rotation. So this will be 87 multiplied by x. And then here we have 120 multiplied by the moment arm, which is this distance. Now sir, why are we considering the concentrated load or the resultant? We are already considering the resultant because again, at 6 meters, this load will be fully applied. And so considering this load, if this is our moment center, let's hold this point and then let's apply this load. It will cause the beam to rotate counterclockwise and so we're gonna use minus so minus 120 now at this point you have to be careful of the moment arm because we will not be using x now we know that this distance is 3 meters and so the moment arm of this resultant load will be again this distance which is x minus 3 meters the whole distance minus this one I hope you would agree 
So this is x minus 3. And so our moment arm here will be x minus 3. Now let's also make it a habit that if we have minus inside the moment arm, then we'll just use these brackets instead of the usual parentheses. Now what this means is the value inside must not be equal to a negative number. It must always be positive. However, you must also consider the limits of the segment. And so since we have 6 up to the point before 10 meters, then what we can substitute for the moment equation must only be within these values. Now we can simplify this one. This will become 87x. And then distributing this one, we have minus 120 multiplied by x. And then minus 120 times negative 3, that will give us positive 360. So this now becomes, adding these, we have negative 33 multiplied by x and then plus 360. And so this is now our moment equation for segment BC. Now just to reiterate the concept, if you will differentiate this function, then you can get VBC. Now differentiating this one, the constant term will become 0 and then negative 33x will become negative 33. And so notice that this is the same with our VBC. And so this is one way to verify if your MBC is correct. Now when I was still an undergraduate student, I will always just form the moment equation and then to get the shear equation, I will just differentiate what I formed for the moment equation. But if you're only required to form the shear equation, then just use this one directly. Now sir, what did you mean earlier that you can consider moments from the right side? Let's go back right here. Let's say you want the moment equation for segment BC. Now if I want to take moments from the right side, then I can just move this one. Just right after point B. And then let's move this one. This is X. And so what's gonna be this distance? From here up to the cut. Notice that this is gonna be 10 meters minus X. And so if this is 10 minus X, I can now take moments about the cut. Now let me just remove this one and then we'll now form the moment equation for segment CB because we are starting from this point up to this one. Now this is where it's gonna change if you are considering an origin from the right side. Now here we have to draw the shear force and bending moment on the positive effect. Now for the positive effect, what's on the left side is upward and then what's on the left side is clockwise. So here we have let's say VCB which is upward this one and then MCB will be clockwise so this is gonna be uh, MCB and so let's just actually consider the moment for MCB we have uh, let's just remove this one taking moments about the cut equal to zero we have MCB which is clockwise so positive so MCB and then we have CY multiplied by the moment arm which is 10 minus X and then this will cause a counterclockwise rotation about the cut so this will be minus 33 times 10 minus x, this moment arm. And then we have 30 knm, which is acting counterclockwise. So this is minus 30. And then we're gonna set this to 0. So setting this to 0, now again, this is from the right. Notice that we can move all of these to the right side of the equation. So we have mcb equals 33 times 10 minus x minus 30. This is now our equation. Now essentially, what this means is, if you want to form this one directly, then you will just need to change your convention. Notice that both CY and this moment load will cause a counterclockwise rotation. However, in here, it is now positive. Uh, by the way, this is also plus moving this one right here. Notice that if the origin is from the right side, then our convention will change. Counterclockwise will be positive, and then clockwise will be negative. And then for shear, downward will be plus and then upward will be minus. And so that's why when forming the moment equation, it's more ideal to form the moment equation from the left side. However, in some cases, like for this one for segment BC, it's better to form the moment equation from the right side because you only have lesser loads. And then you don't have to analyze the moment arm compared to segment BC, wherein we have taken x minus 3 as the moment arm of the resultant. Now simplifying this one, this is now 33 times 10, that becomes 330. And then 33 times x, uh, minus x, that will be minus 33x. And then plus 30, this will simplify into minus 33x. And then adding these, we have plus 360. And so this is our moment equation from the right side. And so notice that it's just the same with this one. And so just to extend the concept, the limits for segment CB 
our moment equation will be from the point right after B up to point C. And so we essentially have 6 is lesser than x. We're not going to use the equal sign because point B is the last point of the segment and so it's not included. And then we have lesser than or equal to the value of x at this point. So that will be 10. And so this is another important concept. Now if you want to form the moment from the right side, you can just actually mirror the beam. You can have this, the roller will be at the left side, and then we have the hinge right here. So this is mirrored. And then we have a distributed load and we also have a moment load right here which is now when mirrored it will now be clockwise or essentially since the value of x will be from the left side it will just be like this and so forming the moment equation in terms of this one then we have mcb is equal to 33 times x because again our convention will change if we are considering from the right side and then we have plus 30 and then the limits for this one will be from 0 up to the point just right before b and so if this is our origin then this is 0 meters and this is 4 meters and so we're not going to use the equal sign for this one because our cut for the mirrored beam is only up to this point and so let's just move this we have this one and then our CY was again 33. So for this beam, if this is segment CB, then MCB will be 33 times X, this force times the moment arm, and then plus a clockwise moment load of 30 KNM. So plus 30. Notice that these are the same. Now I mean this is also plus because again, we are from the right side, so the convention will change. And so if the question is to form the moment equation from the right side, you may just mirror the beam or you can use this one, but then you must change your conventions. That will be our workaround. Now just to prove this, from the left side, let's say you want to take moments about this point. Let's say 2 meters from the right side. Now from the left, this distance will be 6 meters plus 2 meters. And so this total distance will be 8 meters. Now since this is for segment BC, we're going to use this equation. So we have minus 33 times x, wherein our x from the left is 8 meters. And then we have plus 360. And so we're going to get 96. At x equals 8, the moment is 96. Now using this one, we have 33 times from the right side, the distance will be 2 meters. So 33 times 2 and then plus 30, that's going to give us the same value. So at x equals 2, the moment value is 96. And so this is the better way to understand that the moments taken from the left side and the right side must always be equal. Now as a challenge, try to form the moment equation from the right considering segment BA. Now just an additional input, our limits do not cover the whole beam. Because this is from 0 to a point lesser than 6, and then this is from 6 up to a point lesser than 10. Now how about if you want the shear equation and the moment equation at this particular point, uh, point C, where x is equal to 10. We're gonna separate that one. And so, let's move this. Instead of segment, we're gonna consider point C. Now for point C, for the shear equation, we're gonna sum up all the forces at this particular point. And so we have, let's just consider from the left so that we can separate VC, we have 87 upward minus 120 and then since we are now including point c which is at x equals 10 so that we can cover the whole beam we have to add 33 which is the concentrated load directly at point c so plus 33 this is gonna be zero now this must always be zero because at the starting point and the ending point of the beam the shear and moment values would always be zero and so this is another way to verify if your shear equation and moment equation are correct now for the moment equation at point C, we can just use this equation for MBC and then since at point C, uh, directly at point C, we have a counterclockwise moment which has a value of 30, then we need to subtract that one. So minus 30 for the applied moment, we're gonna substitute 10 into this equation. So we have minus 33 times 10 plus 360 minus 30, we now have 0. So MBC is equal to 0. Now another question that will arise is, Sir, why didn't we include this earlier? We did not include this for segment BC because again, our last point for segment BC is just before 10 meters. That's why we excluded this one. But for point C, exactly at point C, we will now include the applied moment and also the applied load. This 33k and going upward. That's also why for segment BC, we did not include 33k and because it's a concentrated load applied directly at point C. 
And so those are the most important concepts that you have to remember all the time, especially when you will be studying structural theory. Now, the more fundamental question will be, Sir, why are we forming these equations? What's the purpose? As engineers, we are interested in the maximum moment occurring in our beams because that will be the point where the bending stress, which we'll discuss in another video, is maximum. So the bending stress is maximum when the moment is maximum. Now going back to the concept that the shear equation is just the derivative of the moment, then we can say that the shear equation defines the slope of the tangent line. This is from your differential calculus. dm over dx is the slope of the tangent line once we get the derivative of m. Let's always remember that. And so we'll be reviewing now the basic concepts of maxima minima in differential calculus. Now let's say we have a function y is equal to negative x squared plus 10x. Differentiating this one with respect to x, we can get dy over dx. So this is going to be minus 2x plus 10. Now this equation defines the slope of the tangent line of this particular curve. Now just to further demonstrate this one, let's try to draw the graph. But then we'll first define when the slope will be negative and when the slope will be positive. Let's say we have a curve that concaves upward. So this will be our minimum point. And then let's say we also have a curve that concaves downward. So this is going to be our maximum point. Now what if you want to consider this point, this one right here? What's going to be the tangent line? Now let's go back to the definition of a tangent line. The tangent line is a line that just touches the curve at a point. And so for this point, our tangent line will be like this. Now what if we want to consider a point to the right of the minimum point? Let's say this one. Now the tangent line for this particular point will be like this. It will meet the curve just at this point. Now when can we say a slope is positive or negative? Let's review this concept. Any line moving upward from left to right can be considered to be a positive slope, while a slope is negative if it moves downward from left to right. And then a slope with a value of 0 is a line that is horizontal. And so let's just move this here. Let's first consider this one. Now from left to right, this tangent line moves downward. And so this is essentially a negative slope. So this is a negative slope because again, from left to right, left to right, we are moving downward. Now how about for this line? For this line, from left to right, we are moving upward. And so this defines a positive slope. Now how about for the minimum point? What will be our slope? Let's recall that the slope of 0 is one that is horizontal. Now for the minimum point, in order to draw a line that just touches this point, then we need to have a horizontal line. This is tangent to the minimum point. And so the slope of this line is equal to 0. And so essentially, the slope of the tangent line at the maximum or minimum point must always be equal to zero. Now how about for this other curve? Let's say we want this point and this point and also this point. Uh, we want the slope of those points. Now for this point, this is going to be our tangent line. And then for this point, our tangent line will have this form. Let's move this. Let's make it touch the point. And so notice that from left to right, this line is moving upward. And so this has a positive slope. While for this one, from left to right, we are moving downward. So this is a negative slope. While for the maximum point, our tangent line will also be a horizontal line. And then the slope will be equal to zero. And so I hope this is clear. Now let's go back to this function. Let's try to graph this function. So we have y is equal to minus x squared plus 10x. And so this is going to be our curve. And so notice that it concaves downward. And so we will have a maximum point at x equals 5. And so this is why to get the maximum point, since the slope right here is equal to 0, then we must set dy over dx, which is the slope, we'll set that to 0 to get the maximum point, or the minimum point if the curve concaves upward. Again, we are setting this to 0 because dy over dx defines the slope of the tangent line at any particular point on the curve. Now if we'll set this one to 0, dy over dx equals minus 2x plus 10. Solving x, we have 5. And so this means that at x equals 5, the slope is going to be 0. And so that's why at this point, the maximum or minimum point will occur. And so substituting this value to the original equation, you can get the maximum point. So you have y is equal to minus 5 squared plus 10 times 5. This becomes 5 squared is 25, so minus 25. 
plus 10 times 5 which is 50 we have positive 25 this is the maximum point and so we have here at x equals 5 the maximum point is 25 now let's make sense of the slope now at the left side of the maximum point the slope is positive just like in here we have a maximum point so the slope here at the left side is positive and so here let's try to consider a point before 5 meters so let's say 4 since this defines the slope of the tangent line, then let's try to substitute 4. Let's copy this one. Now, at x is equal to 4, dy over dx will be negative 2 times 4 plus 10. We have positive 2. Now, since the result is positive, then that means that we have a positive slope at the left side of the maximum point. Now, how about at a point at the right side of the maximum point? Now, since our maximum point occurs at x equals 5, let's try to consider at x equals let's say 7 meters so at x equals 7 dy over dx will be negative 2 times 7 plus 10 this gives us negative 4 now this is because for the right side of the maximum point the slope will be negative because from left to right again we are going downward now sir why is this important recall that the derivative of the moment equation is the shear equation and so the shear equation defines the slope of the moment equation and so this means that if we'll set the shear equation to zero, we can get the maximum moment. And so let's try to make sense of this one considering our moment equation. Now for segment AB, we have this moment equation and then we have this corresponding shear equation. And so this defines the slope of this function. And so if we'll set this one to zero, we can get the distance x at which the moment is maximum. And so let's try that. We have zero is equal to 87 minus 20 times x Solving x, we have 4.35. And so this means that at 4.35 meters, the maximum moment will occur. So 0 equals 87 minus 20x. x is equal to 4.35 meters. And so the maximum moment of the beam will be MAB is equal to 87 multiplied by x, in which x is 4.35. And then we have minus 10 times 4.35 and then squared. So this is going to be... 189.225 so the maximum moment uh, let's just change this one into m max we have 189.225 knm and so we're going to use this value to solve the maximum bending stress for this particular beam now sir we have two moment equations we have this one and also this one why didn't we use 4.35 for this particular equation again remember that for segment bc our limits are 6 and 10 now since this is lesser than 6 then we can't use 4.35 for this particular equation. And then here, we are also considering VAB. And so the distance that we can solve must also correspond to MAB. And so just to reiterate, at 4.35 meters, the bending stress of the beam will be critical. And so that's what we want to solve as engineers so that we'll be able to design our beams in the correct manner. Now, just so we can visualize further, we can actually model this equation. We have y is equal to 87x minus 10x squared, we have this graph in which our maximum point will occur at x equals 4.35 and the moment value is 189.225. This is again the maximum moment and this is the point where the maximum moment occurs.